What's going on guys? Welcome to Trucking with Old Snapper. I am Old Snapper. I'm leaving Aransas Pass now, headed up towards San Antonio, where I have to do my orientation that starts tomorrow. This is Monday. I don't know when I'll get this video edited and put up, probably tonight or this evening sometime. I was going to talk about my final review of Polly now that I'm calm. I'm a little calmer. I was uh, pretty upset the night that I left, or the night that I, I put in my notice that I was leaving. And I uh, figured now that I'm a little calmer and I've had more rest, I'd probably make a lot more sense. Now it's pretty dang foggy out here, but yesterday and today's been real foggy. And it hasn't been lifting till about noon. It's kind of weird. But anyway, it's been an enjoyable time off. It was good seeing some old friends and hanging out and stuff and catching up. Good seeing uh, some of my family. Went and visited one of my uncles and my aunt and, and uh, my sister and them. Anyway, this review of Polly. Polly, for the most part, is a pretty decent company. You know, so if you're thinking of going there there's nothing wrong with going there there is you can make a good living there it is uh you know there's a lot of things that have improved there like now you get paid weekly used to we had used to have to turn in our miles or turn in our paperwork to get paid you know so there's there's been a lot of improvements on that aspect from what i heard from some of the old drivers the equipment used to be worse you know like i said i wasn't there back in those days so by the sounds of it they have made progress there but there's still a lot of progress to be to be made now before i left one of the upper managers reached out to me to try to rectify the situation you know and and try to get me to uh, to stay he called me pretty much as soon as i entered the yard i mean as soon as i turned into the guard shack he called me and i pulled off to the side there and talked to him a few minutes now, once he realized that I wasn't staying, he wasn't he wasn't mean or anything. I just got the feeling that he really didn't care to talk after that point. There wasn't any conversation to be had. But I kind of, I wouldn't say forced it. I just kept talking. <laughs> you know, and, I, and basically my goal was, even though I'm not there anymore, you know, I would still hope for improvement for my fellow drivers that are still there and for future drivers that are coming to the company and since i had his ear at that moment i was going to go ahead and, and talk it out you know not for myself not for my own benefit but for the benefit of, of other drivers i talked to him about the shop different things like that now one thing i can say that I think is causing a problem at Poly is there's a lot of, and this happens at every company, so it's not just a Poly problem, but there's a lot of certain people like certain people, so they take up for them, and there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a cover up kind of thing, like sweeping under the rug. But look, there is a definite problem between the shop and the office and those trucks getting fixed properly. I think that's a lot of the issue. I know the last time my truck was worked on, they said uh, Rush Truck Centers had actually done it. And they, they didn't do, they only fixed one thing out of the things that, that was on the list. I've had my truck in the shop at other times where the shop worked on it, you know, and it still come out not fixed properly or not fixed at all, you know, and I know drivers talk we sit in a driver's lounge and talk and a lot of drivers have to put their truck in the shop multiple times to get it fixed and the shop will throw a fit they get a little bit pissy because they're covered up i don't know the full dynamics of it the behind the scenes i can just tell you from what i've seen from an outside perspective from an outside perspective somewhere along the chain they let they let things go until it's reached the point now that they're they're kind of overwhelmed the shop is overwhelmed with with things that need to be fixed so they'll focus on what's dot required and kind of 
brush over the rest. So I don't know what their process is for making sure that a truck is fixed before it goes back out to the truck line. But whatever that process is, it's not working. Because trucks will go back out to the line, still not fixed. And there's a lot of office politics. And even as a driver, you're going to hear it sometimes if you work there. Like one time I was out on the truck line and uh, I think I had a an air dryer or something that had gone out on me. I had something go out. Well, there's uh, the Spanish guy and there's another guy that rides with him. They drive around that white truck out there on the yard. Well, he had come out there and this is way back. This is way back. Uh, this is when that guy was in the position that Darlene's in now. He comes out there and he takes a look at it. Of course, you, if you put your finger in there or do something or another, it, it'll help that uh, that air dryer kick in, you know, temporarily so you can move the truck. It'll hold air. You know, so he was doing, doing that little trick or whatever. Showed me how to do that. So we get the truck over to the shop. But in the meantime, he's griping about the guys in the office at the shop, right? He's talking trash about them. Well, as a driver, I don't need to hear that. That ain't got nothing, you know, I don't need to hear none of that. But later on, I got to thinking that maybe there was tension between the mechanics and the people in charge in the shop. And maybe that's why it's going down the way it's going down. You know, are the mechanics intentionally trying to make the supervision look bad in the shop or you know whatever the situation may be but whatever it is there's some tension there and i often wonder if that was part of the problem something else i noticed is uh and before darlene took over that spot last year i was inside the shop and they were griping about the guy that that had darlene's spot you know they're making comments like he don't do anything i don't know what his purpose is yada 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 and I thought after Darlene took that spot that maybe that tension would go away, right? And that would be the end of that. Because Darlene's pretty easy to get along with. Well, she ended up moving into that spot and that guy, that gentleman ended up moving back into a truck. I didn't know him. I didn't know him hardly at all. I'd only dealt with him once or twice. I can't remember his name. But when Darlene moved back into that spot, it still didn't end. You know, there was still tension between the office at the shop you know i don't know if it bled over i don't i don't know what the what the reasoning was or what the deal was but i'm not in upper management but i think that might be some of their issue when it comes to getting those trucks fixed properly here's what i do know as a driver the equipment's hard to deal with it's almost better to pull off the yard and call the road service to get it fixed you're gonna have a better chance of getting it fixed and honestly it shouldn't be like that there's no telling how much that costs the company because a lot of drivers do do that i myself have done that in the past where i didn't want to deal with the shop i didn't have confidence in the shop i didn't think the shop would get it fixed properly and i didn't want to deal with the downtime i knew it would get fixed faster and get fixed properly if i just got away from the yard and called uh, road service which i used to do you know it's just like uh it's just like there they have this opti idle system you know where you turn on the the start stop on the dash and then you can operate the uh ac and heat in the sleeper other than my last truck there i never had one that worked never Last winter, I drove all last winter with a plug-in heater. A plug-in heater. And I, and it and froze my butt off. A little plug-in heater that you buy at the truck stop. And I froze my butt off all last winter. Even in the loaner trucks, I never had one that worked. You know, and that's not a DOT requirement. But in a lot of ways, it's a safety requirement because you need to be able to get your sleep. Now, there's little tricks to making the truck idle, and uh, I know I did a video on how to make the International 2021 Internationals idle, 
you know, because, and it was for that reason. It was to help other drivers that might be there going through the same thing. Because even the last loaner truck I had, the sleeper heat and AC didn't work properly. Now, I know at one point I was at the yard and I saw a driver had turned one in for that very reason. And the shop just accused them of not knowing how to, how to use it. Because if you turn it on, it'll run for a little while. It might work for the first hour, hour and a half. But after a while, it'll just shut off. It'll just shut off on you. So you're constantly waking up throughout the night, have to turn it back on and get up, do all that kind of crap. You know, and I think that's why the shop may assume that it works when it doesn't. Same thing with the Opti-Idle. And the Peterbilt, the last truck I had, the Opti-Idle would work for a little while. But sometime throughout the night, it would shut off. And then I would wake up the next morning, oftentimes with dead batteries. Now, I got in the habit of getting up at night and checking on it and uh, resetting it or starting my truck up to make sure the batteries weren't dead. But there was a couple times I slept through the night being tired, woke up in the morning and had to get a jump start because the opti idle had disengaged sometime throughout the night. Now when you turn the switch on, it's got a little light there that, that turns on, lets you know it's on, plus it tells you on the dash. But for some reason throughout the night, it would just, it would shut off, wouldn't work, you know? So there's a lot of little stuff like that. So when the shop got it, I put it in for that. But when the shop got it, they probably set the opti idle and said, oh, it, well, it works, it works fine. Yeah, well, take it out there, put it on a lot, set it, come back the next day and look at it. You'll see that it's off. You know, it did it to me countless times. My biggest issue at Poly was the shop. My biggest issue was the was the equipment. I had a lot of downtime, trailers going down, uh, different things like that. You know, I'd always heard stories about guys losing tires off of axles. I myself had never encountered that, ever. You know, I've been driving 14 years. I haven't been out here as long as some of you fellows who've been out here 25, 30 years. But I've never encountered that. I did it Polly for the first time. Had a trailer that was riding a little funny. I pull off at the next exit. I think I was in North Carolina. And mind you, I just left a yard with this trailer. Just left a yard with it, you know, one of, one of the plants. I walk back there and my tire is already about halfway off. The brakes and everything have slid out. I mean, the tire, the whole, whole kit and caboodle was coming off. You know, that wheel bearing or whatever in there had gone out. Well, I spent 11 days on that breakdown. And towards the end, I started griping. Like the last couple days, I started kind of throwing a fit a little bit. I tried to just deal with it at first, but after a while, you know, 11 days is a long time broke down. And I contacted uh, one of the people in the shop, was kind of pitching a fit about it. And they kind of put it on me because they were like, well, you should have contacted this other lady that works in the office and they gave me her number. And I was like, well, hold on, I did. Well, then they contacted her. She said I didn't. So then I sent a screenshot because I had contacted her through uh, text message and through phone. But I sent a screenshot of where I had talked to her already. And that kind of cost me a little bit of, t a little bit of tension because it upset her and pissed her off, but she had lied, you know, because I did talk to her. You know, and uh, me and her kind of we never did argue or anything like that, but you could definitely tell there was tension there from that point forward after that situation. And when I talked to her, I didn't continue calling her every day because she didn't tell me anything. She told me exactly what the road breakdown service had already told me. She didn't tell me anything new. You know, so I knew at that point that, you know, she doesn't, she didn't have any information. She, there's no way for her to, to help me. I can deal directly with the breakdown people myself. I don't need her. That job 
was a job. She had a position that really didn't need to be there. Because as a driver, you're dealing with both the people that are working on the equipment and the road service over the phone. You can do all that yourself. You don't need any mediator in between. That's just somebody getting paid for something that doesn't need to be there. But there's a lot of companies out there that have positions like that. I know when I was at Crete, there was a few people that had jobs. And I really didn't know what their job was or what the point of their of their job was, right? But it's all good. Now, we'll tell you, if you're going to Poly, pack light because you're probably going to change trucks quite a bit. I changed trucks a lot at Poly. Uh, whether it was changing permanent trucks or moving over into a loaner truck, moving back to my regular truck, I changed trucks a lot at Poly. It almost reminded me of slip seating because you'll, you'll change trucks so much because they have a lot of mechanical issues. Poly is awesome at pay. Their pay is top notch. When you're running, you'll make really good money there. The loads are really good. You can pick your own loads where you want to go. Now, every once in a while, you'll call and they'll only have one load and it's usually going somewhere that nobody wants to go. I always just assumed that probably everybody had already taken the good loads and I was at the back of the line. So I would just take that load anyway. I would cover it. Because I, if, if they called me for a load, I never said no. I was going to take something. I preferred to take something that I wanted to take. But if there wasn't anything that I wanted to take, I would take whatever they had. You know, but that will happen sometimes so you just take the good with the bad but even their bad loads are not that bad what i used to call bad loads were loads like that went to uh, prince george virginia i don't really care for going to virginia but i used to go there i used to cover that load uh they got one that goes up to connecticut i don't really care for going to connecticut but i would cover that load if it was all that was there you know, I prefer to try to stay either in the southeast. I'd run down South Carolina and Florida. Or uh, run up the middle of the country, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Or I like to go out west. Of course, I got a granddaughter up in Washington. So, I really tried to go out that way quite a bit. A lot of drivers like running out west, though. So, the way you get on the board, it's a first-come, first-served thing. When you got on the outbound board all the drivers that were already on the board would get a call before you so it's all in line so by the time it gets to you a lot of those loads may be gone and that's why it's real important to get on the board early dispatch there is awesome though i had uh, conversations with dispatch a few different times never had an issue they work real well with the drivers and uh now granted i did sometimes feel like they were lying to me <laughs> you know when it when all they had was a connecticut i was like how convenient all you have is connecticut but who knows it may have just been i was that far back in line i never had a problem with dispatch dispatch there was pretty awesome really like those guys upper management there is pretty awesome even the even the driver supervisors there are pretty awesome now i got sideways with the one gentleman there towards the end but uh, that was the only guy I'd ever had a problem with when it came to driver supervisors. I dealt with the other two, there's three of them there. I dealt with the other two driver supervisors many times. Never had an issue. Really good guys, man. I know one of them there, when he's asking you to do something, he will tell you why it needs to be done that way. And I always really appreciated that. So overall, I would give Polly probably three out of five stars probably three out of five stars and i think for them to get five out of five stars they would definitely need to upgrade the equipment or or get to work on the equipment you know a little bit better and sweep some of that driver or some of that office politics up under the rug you know the uh drivers when they're dealing with the mechanics are already having a bad day things are already going bad for them they're having to get their truck worked on the last thing they need to hear about is 
that mechanic's problem with the guy in the office and them talking smack about him or this guy over here or that person over there you know that that doesn't put a good dynamic out there it also doesn't make a driver feel very comfortable or very secure when when the office is uh, having turmoil like that now granted office politics happens at every company but it should be kept within the office it should be kept within their walls they deal with that in-house drivers have their politics we deal with we deal with each other and uh same thing you know we kind of keep that amongst each other and deal with each other and i think those two things right there would pick polly up on another level polly has the ability to in my opinion the ability to be a even better company to drive for than even Walmart or UPS or FedEx or some of these other big companies out here that are known for you know really good with drivers where drivers make good money you know being broke down costs the driver money not only does it cost the driver money it costs the company money the company spends a lot of money flying drivers back and forth to come get loaner trucks or to go recover a truck or do different things there's a lot of money spent in that and i'm sure Polly tracks it you know i'm not sure what their thoughts are on that because i never spoke to them about that that's above my pay grade but i know if i owned the company and i was paying for plane tickets constantly like that i'd want to know why what's going on why is this happening so much you know when was the last time that truck was in the shop who worked on it What's the problem with that truck now? Was this something that could have been fixed at that time? You know, there's a lot of questions there that I would be asking to try to fix those issues. You know, do we need to talk to the shop? Do we need a company barbecue, bring everybody together, you know, and, and try to mend some fences here where everybody's getting along? You know, I mean, there's, there's definitely some questions I'd be asking if it were me but i'm just a truck driver i will say this poly is still in my top three best companies you know the top three best companies i ever worked for uh, tyson foods was one of them tyson foods would probably be my number three poly would probably be my number two pretty close to a number one but probably my number two and uh number one would probably be creek carriers I know a lot of people don't like Creek because they are a mega carrier. I made pretty good money at Creek Carriers and Creek took care of me. I just kind of got hung up on their Walmart fleets. My issue with Creek was their Walmart fleets. And when you're used to making $1,500 a week and all of a sudden your pay drops down to $800 a week because you're stuck on a Walmart fleet, that sucks. They used to kill me with that and they would force you to run them Walmart fleets. That's what ended my my uh, tenure there at, at creek carriers i was being forced to run the walmart fleets a lot their freight was getting slow on the road and as their freight slowed down on the road they were forcing drivers into those into those walmart fleets more often now granted i got it freight was slowing down on the on the road you know they needed to move drivers around and do things but in my opinion if freight was slowing down that much i need to find somewhere else to go so that's what I did. I went to Poly. And I really blame the uh, freight recession on that. Otherwise, I probably never would have left Crete. But I'd say Poly would be my number two. My number two to Crete. And there were times that, that I, in certain areas, I would say Poly's number one. You know, when it comes to dispatch, Poly's number one. When it comes to time off, Poly's number one where it lacks at is the equipment that's where it falls is the equipment anyway i appreciate all of you for stopping by if you are going to poly don't get nervous they are a good company they will treat you well they will take care of you just be prepared for some of the issues that are there make sure your truck is in good shape when you come out of orientation so you can uh, run for a while without a breakdown and stuff like that communicate with the office uh, treat dispatch well and they will treat you well. I promise you they will Dispatch took care of me there They did me right and uh, 
good luck to you and if you have any issues or any problems don't be scared to speak up talk to the upper management reach out to uh, people like michael hyatt he's a good one to talk to uh, octavius is a good one to talk to pat he's a good one to talk to you reach out to those guys and talk to them and uh if they can help you they will they don't want to see you leave and i hope that even though it doesn't benefit me i hope that some changes do come to poly for the drivers that are still there and for the future drivers to come there y'all take care stay safe and keep trucking